Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com, uh, DwyerBoxingNews.com for the podcast. You know, something's been on my mind. Um, I had a photo that I use from time to time of uh, my favorite fighter ever, and that's Jack Johnson, the first black heavyweight champion, right? We'll say officially because I think the boxing hardcore understand that there were some black men before Jack Johnson, notably Peter Jackson, who could easily have won the title or at least would have been viable as a heavyweight contender if there wasn't a hard color line back then, right? But let's talk about Jack Johnson. Um, I was raised in a house that was on the other side of the street. In other words, my father was a big Joe Lewis fan. I mean, big. Now understand, Joe Lewis was the man when my dad was a little kid, right? So he was totally into Joe. More importantly, he was also into the class with which Joe carried himself. Right? Apparently, Joe Lewis was one of these guys who, you know, always wore suits when he was away from a training camp. Right? He always made sure that the statements he made were patriotic, in a sense that they agreed with whatever the U.S. government was doing. Right? Joe didn't do anything to disgrace the race. That's the phrase. <laughs> Lewis himself used, right? He didn't do anything to disgrace the race in terms of being seen publicly with white women, right? He followed a code where apparently he wouldn't go to clubs alone. He wouldn't gloat over opponents he'd knocked out, right? He you know, wouldn't be seen publicly with women who weren't his wife. Right? That's who Joe Lewis was. My dad loved it. Right? Just to understand, Joe Lewis was someone who, you know, my dad thought of as a role model. Right? Now let's... <laughs> I need for you to bear with me here because I understand people don't agree with my point of view and that's fair enough, right? For the record, my dad also loved Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Now, Dr. King is a little bit before my time, but same type thing, right? Uh, Dr. King carried himself in a way that my dad loved, right? Dr. King wore collared shirts, had ties on, you know, looked like he was always, you know, going to a job interview or going to church, right? Uh, spoke in, you know, the King's English, so to speak, right? Uh, you know, my dad believed in that kind of stuff. That's one of the reasons why <laughs> people hear me talk and they think I speak in the King's English. Whatever, right? Now, just follow me with this one. Because when I was a kid, understand, Jack Johnson was persona non grata in boxing. People didn't even talk about Jack that much. You would read up on Joe Lewis, and you would think that Joe Lewis was the first black heavyweight champion. Right? You would think that Joe Lewis lived some kind of more moral life than Jack Johnson. Now let me just say this, right? I personally feel, and I know people are gonna disagree with me on this. <laughs> they have, to my face, right? Uh, my father disagreed with me the whole way through. Okay, fine, right? But just understand that Joe Lewis, in my opinion, his image is suffocating. I think that's the wrong message, the wrong message to send to African-American youth, to minority men. 
right? You know, Joe Lewis just had too many rules attached to him. Social handcuffs, so to speak. Put another way, he knew his place, didn't he? Understand, part of the Joe Lewis legacy is, you know, in interviews, he's always deadpan, not a lot of emotion. Didn't want to look like he was arrogant or full of himself, right? Because, of course, that was the wrong way to portray yourself if you were an African-American in the 1930s. Now, I know it was a different time. I know it was a different time. But I don't understand for the life of me. And maybe YouTube Nation can set me straight. Maybe people from my father's generation can set me straight. But I don't understand why that Joe Lewis social straight jacket, right, always dressing up, always supporting the government, right? Keep in mind, Lewis, you know, like many of today's professional athletes, wouldn't even comment on, you know, things like Jim Crow, which happened back then. Keep in mind, Lewis himself, born in Alabama. I know he moves to Detroit. But he's born in Alabama. Certainly the guy had to have family or at least some consciousness of his background to kind of speak out, right? Billy Holiday around that era sings Strange Fruit, right? Black men are getting lynched in the South, aren't they, right? Joe Lewis, you would think it's a colorblind society, right? Let me add, by the way, that none of us should confuse image with reality, right? In real life, we're finding out about Joe Lewis and Sonia Henney. We're finding out about Joe Lewis and Lana Turner, right? We're finding out that Joe Lewis was involved with some women who will be charitable here in the phrase, were working women, right? Joe Lewis, we're finding out, was actually a player behind closed doors. That wasn't the Joe Lewis who was presented to the public. I'll even go further, right? For those of you historical types listening to this video, research Joe Lewis. You're going to find out that young Joe Lewis comes up with the help of numbers runners, right? Guys who are on the other side of the law. They're the ones who protected Lewis, nurtured Lewis got Lewis the opportunity to fight at Madison Square Garden. Now let's talk about Jack Johnson, who quite frankly, as he himself put it, was a free man, right? They would ask him about the choices he was making in his life, and he would say simply, I'm not a slave. Right now, he's going around doing what he wants to do, right? Keep in mind too, Johnson, very cerebral guy, opens a club in Harlem that later becomes the Cotton Club, gets a U.S. patent, is a businessman. If you're in law school watching this video, you know that one of the big cases in American history was the U.S. government's improper use of the Mann Act, right, to prosecute Jack Johnson. It's a travesty of American jurisprudence, right? Understand Johnson is blazing trails to the point where when he's about to beat Tommy Burns for the heavyweight championship, they kill the film. Folks, there are no films of the ending of that fight. The fight's being filmed. They killed the film. They didn't want the visual of a black man beating a white man who held the title at that time, right? Understand with Jack Johnson, right? When he beats Jim Jeffries, there are race riots across the United States. Understand that the interstate trafficking of interracial bouts becomes banned in the United States for years, right? Understand that President Roosevelt, after the Johnson-Jeffries fight, July the 4th, 1910, 
actually starts talking about banning boxing. Right? That's the atmosphere in which Johnson lived. Now, in that atmosphere where Johnson has to flee to Paris, right, because he's being prosecuted in the United States, he later turns himself in and while in prison is able to, you know, develop a ranch that he's able to patent. Understand, Johnson, you know, makes money from boxing, then he makes money from inventions, right? Understand that Johnson is going around doing what he wants to do. He's free. Right? This, <laughs> you know, he's unfettered. He doesn't feel that he has to agree with the United States government in their domestic policy or their foreign policy. He feels that he's a grown man. He can date who he wants, right? He feels that he can literally own property, have nightclubs, be in his nightclubs with his wife, who's not black. Now, if you go back to that era, understand the NAACP was embarrassed by Jack Johnson. How do we know? They issued statements condemning Jack Johnson's behavior. Right now, Jack Johnson's not the first black boxing champion, right? Go back and you'll find out other names. Joe Gans, for example, right? Held a belt. But the heavyweight title carries a certain weight, doesn't it? Right? There's the rest of boxing, and then there is the heavyweight champion. And at a time of Jim Crow, you literally have a black guy with the belt. And he doesn't feel like he has to look grateful. He doesn't feel like he has social rules on him where he can't publicly be seen with white women. He doesn't feel that he has to be deadpan. Right? When he gives interviews, he knocks down opponents, whatever color they are, black, white, he knocks down opponents and in the case of Stanley Kitchell, according to legend, and the legend's probably false, right? He flicks Kitchell's teeth from his glove as he stands over Kitchell after knocking him down, right? Understand, <laughs> Joe Lewis's handlers and Joe Lewis made a conscious decision not to be Jack Johnson. Understand, Johnson was still alive. Johnson was outraged by it. Johnson actually rooted against Joe Lewis because he felt Lewis sent the wrong message. Johnson saw himself as inspirational, right? Because keep in mind, nobody gave him the heavyweight title. Keep in mind, he had to travel to Australia to have a shot at the heavyweight title. Let me point out to you. Let me give kudos to Australia. Because, of course, Peter Jackson got his opportunity in Australia, right? You know, Jack Johnson's from Galveston, Texas. Part of the Jim Crow South. He had to travel to get his opportunity. Understand, too, that Tommy Burns got an inordinate amount of money to fight Jack Johnson. Burns told people that he thought that Johnson, because he was black, was going to be too yellow to fight him, that Johnson would wilt, right, from all the pressure. Because, of course, the thought was that black people couldn't handle pressure. So the first round starts. Jack Johnson comes out across the ring, looks at Tommy Burns and says, Here I am, Tommy. Now, who told you I was yellow? Right? That's the kind of guy. I want young people to look up to. There's no limits. You can be successful without apology. You own your life. Your life is yours. If society's racist, why do you have to be racist? If you're a grown man, how could society tell you 
who to date, who to hang out with. Right? Let me point out, too, that Johnson was so controversial for the era. Now, did you know Johnson got knocked out in the third round by a white guy? Right? Now, keep in mind, it's even more scandalous than that. The guy who knocks out Johnson, this is when Johnson's on the way up, is a Jewish guy. Understand, there was a lot of anti-Semitism in the country back then, right? This is before World War II. Right? Did you know that Johnson, while in prison with this guy as a cellmate, because the two got arrested for having a prize fight, right? Johnson learned the finer arts of boxing from this guy who ended up being a boxing Hall of Famer. Right? Because the guy who knocked out Johnson, believe it or not, had been in the ring with many of the biggest names of the era. So Johnson, when he was in his heyday, openly talked about how his compatriot had helped him develop his skills. This was simply crazy at the time. Right? Understand, Johnson wasn't racist. Johnson was open-minded. He laughed at society. Right? Now, to me, that's a much more powerful personality. That's a much more powerful vision than the Joe Lewis vision. Wow, this video is probably getting me calls right now. Right? So you can imagine the conversations I had with my dad. Because Jack Johnson, who predated my dad, was supposed to represent incredibly the way not to present yourself in public for an African-American male. Right? Keep in mind, Johnson, in addition to being into operating nightclubs and touring Paris, was also into driving cars. There's some famous story where Jack Johnson's driving, some guy stops him, right? A cop stops him for speeding and says to Johnson, and I'm just making up the numbers here, right? Says to Johnson, hey, you know, that's a ticket. That's a $50 ticket. So the claim is that Johnson then gives the guy $100. So the cop says, hey, why are you giving me $100? I told you the ticket was for $50. And Johnson is supposed to have replied, well, I'm going to be speeding on the way back. So I thought I'd just pay early. Right? Jack Johnson was a man. I think it's only the racism of the time that led to the idea that the Joe Lewis persona, and that's what it was. If you study Joe's private life, you understand it's just a persona. That the Joe Lewis persona was preferable to the Jack Johnson persona, right? I disagree strongly. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> These two men are two of the giants of the sport. I certainly respect Joe Lewis's punching ability, right? As far as my father was concerned, there was Joe Lewis, there was Ali, then there was everybody else, right? I certainly respect Joe Lewis's punching power, his boxing ability, his social significance, no question about it. Right? In the movie, Spike Lee's movie, Malcolm X, there's even a scene where Denzel Washington playing Malcolm is watching Joe Lewis. Right? Just understand that Joe Lewis wasn't the first black heavyweight champion. Understand that Jack Johnson precedes him by more than a generation. Understand that Jack Johnson wins, wins the belt almost 40 years before Jackie Robinson integrates baseball. Right? Understand, Jack Johnson was well-spoken, well-read, right? Was really a Renaissance man. Really should be viewed as an inspiration by most. Now, let me encourage you to do this. YouTube him. Right? Search for Jack Johnson videos here on YouTube. You're going to find something astonishing. They actually have tapes up on YouTube where... The narrator, and these are old tapes, 
the narrator tries to convince you that Jack Johnson's fights, the biggest fights of his career, were fixed. Right? The idea is that this black man couldn't have actually earned his way to the heavyweight title. Right? We'll overlook the fact that even before he gets the title, Jack Johnson's beating boxing legends like Sam Langford. Right? Look him up. Right? And so understand, the media campaign to devalue Jack Johnson's accomplishments wasn't subtle. It was explicit. Right? If you look at the newspaper reports of Jack Johnson fights, they're outrageous. And still, Johnson stood tall. So when I see today's fighters, and I'm serious about this. In fact, let's back up a little bit. When I see fighters like Floyd Patterson, right, I see a guy who's spending too much energy trying to portray himself in a certain light to the public, right? I know Floyd's no longer with us. I understand Floyd was, you know, the youngest guy to win the heavyweight title when he did. I know Floyd, I know Ali said Floyd was one of the hardest punchers he faced. Um, I understand that Floyd was the first man to regain the heavyweight championship on and on, right? Floyd did a lot of great things. But, right, when you look into these guys' backgrounds, understand, a guy can present himself as clean cut and not be. Understand, when you look at Floyd Patterson versus the Sonny Liston, in their private lives, there's not much difference between them, right? I think that, unfortunately, a lot of African Americans are placed in a box where they feel they have to come across like Joe Lewis, right? For those who may not know, right, when Joe Lewis got older, he lost his mind, right? Um, you can only imagine the pressure he was under, right? I'm not sure that that's the role model to follow. Let me say this too. A guy who kind of reminds me of Joe Lewis a little bit, Oscar De La Hoya, right? Now, now this might stun some people, but Oscar's one of my favorite people in boxing, right? Understand who Oscar was, great fighter. Understand that multiple guys, right? Shane Mosley. Fernando Vargas, in big fights against Oscar, felt a need to juice. And I'm just here to tell you that I personally thought Oscar beat Mosley in the rematch. <laughs> and you saw what happened at the end of the Fernando Vargas fight. But Oscar spent a lot of capital, a lot of capital, just like Joe Lewis did, trying to present himself in a certain image, trying to be the clean-cut, all-American guy. Right? The clean-cut golden boy. Right? Oscar, you know, always proper diction. Right? Always well-dressed. Right? Not running the streets. Oh, ooh, ooh, no, not him. Right? Living the proper life. The Joe Lewis life. Then we came to find out that Oscar actually was living a different life. I'll let you Google Oscar and figure out what was really going on there. Right? Don't get blinded by these cardboard Joe Lewis images. Right? What we should be celebrating, quite frankly, is a guy who is ahead of the curve socially, who isn't letting racism in society slow down what he does. Right? Who has interests outside of the ring who has a social consciousness, who isn't afraid to break with his government when his government is doing things that aren't right. Right? I encourage you to re-examine Jack Johnson. He's an even bigger giant for the sport of boxing than we realize because this guy was also a giant outside of the ring. You know who loved Jack Johnson? Muhammad Ali, and for good reason. Let me hear from you. Thanks for indulging me on this editorial. <laughs>
<laughs> Leave your comments for all of us in the comment section to this video, whether you agree or disagree with my point of view. Thanks for stopping by.